Hello, hello, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Welcome to Stars with Stasi, where no matter who or what you are on this cosmic journey, you are welcome here. Greetings, I'm Stasi, your trusted psychic and intuitive reader. This is your weekly reading for May 19th through May 25th, or whenever you come across this message, Taurus, it is meant for you. I've shuffled these cards, so we're going to get ahead and get started with this week's theme. Now, we do have Gemini, uh, we have the sun leaving your sign in Taurus and heading into Gemini on the 20th. And then right after that, on the 23rd, we have a full moon in Sagittarius happening in your eighth house. So those are Scorpio vibes. I'm a Scorpio. So it's going to be death, taxes, rebirth, um, transformation, other people's money, and your sensual sexual side. So the full moon is a time of release. So you could be either wanting to deepen those relationships with other people on the next level, like a very deep understanding. You could be exploring more occult studies, releasing old uh, beliefs and behaviors. And the other thing could be as well is that um, you are looking to completely transform some area of your life. So, <laughs> as I say that, number 22, fool's embrace this reads transmuting pain. So this is a time of healing and again, release with this full moon energy. And the eighth house is super deep, right? It's a very spiritual time, very introspective and has you questioning, right? Your perspectives. And then we've got number 51, stars in the sky, limitless possibilities. So spirits reminding you that when you release the hurt, this is also a master number 22, reducing to four a number of foundation, how you're going to feel grounded, where your stability lies. And then this is a number six. This reduces to six, which is Gemini energy and the major arcana, the lover's card suggesting Taurus that you are at a crossroads, right? And this is saying, listen, there are limitless possibilities ahead. You can't begin to imagine. So if you're feeling a period of exhaustion, or if you're even feeling this energy of like, you need to just start over, that's very specific. That's that's very much Scorpio energy. That is eighth house vibes. And so just lean into that. And it's this period of being comfortable, being uncomfortable, to be honest. All right, this... Re I'm telling you, this actually says the walker, the unknown journey, right? So you're heading into the unknown and it's actually going to be the best thing you could do for yourself. I feel like you're breaking out of an algorithm. I feel that you're going to be exploring different places, different cultures, different ideas. So this is really good energy. I've got the runway secret, running away from problems. So this is also something you need to be... Um, I don't know, what should I say, cognizant of this week, right? Make sure that you're facing anything that's coming your way because the reality of it is it's not as bad as you think it is, right? So, and this is also, let me see here. Yeah, <laughs> actually, you know what's very funny is I break your cards up. We're going to pull nine cards. I don't think I said that yet. We're going to do nine cards and then clarify them. But I've got Scorpio energy here. So here's your eighth house vibes. And then I've got the eight of wands. And this is about taking action. So you're going to be doing a lot of releasing this week. But I feel that that release is going to allow you to birth like a different side of yourself. So let's see what spirit has to say for you this week, Taurus. Angels, ancestors, spirit guides, please give me the highest and best. Wow, healing. Like I said, transmuting pain, healing from third party energy or heartbreak. So we'll get we'll dig deeper. Give me the highest and best for Taurus this week, please. Wow. All right. They want me to take these as they came up. And these are all cards of release and endings. So give me one second because they gave me six right off the bat. So I've got the three of swords, the world card the wheel of fortune, that in itself, that's definitely transmuting pain. That brings this first card into total alignment. So the world card is Saturn energy. So that's going to have you really taking a hard look at, um, really just at things, right? How you want to progress forward. And then we also have the wheel of fortune. Um, wheel of fortune is Jupiter energy. So Interesting. Give me one second. Let me look at this because Jupiter is a, a planet of expansion. And so I feel that releasing this past heartbreak is going to close a chapter out for you because that's what the wheel of fortune is. Well, let's go back. So the world card, 
in the tarot, it's the story of the fool. And the fool is the card, it's numbered zero because it's the, literally the creation. And you are now going through a journey. And once you get to the world card, you have mastered your that chapter of your life, right? You are ready to start new and then you start as the fool again. So you are in this period of healing a past hurt because the three of swords isn't necessarily just about lying, cheating, stealing, third party energy. This is just healing from past heartbreak and this is letting it go. And this eighth house energy is all about that. Scorpios are known to burn it to the ground and then rise from those ashes stronger and better than ever before. And Taurus, that's what you're sitting in right now. The release of that. This could be also the other side of your dark night of the soul. Um, I'm looking at the five of swords at the bottom of the deck, suggesting that any conversations you have this week, be strategic in your words and you will get more out of the conversation. So I've got the judgment card coming through. You're being asked to release the past completely because you have to commit to the lifestyle that it is that you want for yourself. Spirit, I, I'm getting this very um, huge push and I'm actually, <laughs> if you can imagine, I'm seeing a person being pushed out of a plane. So it, listen, you might go, be going skydiving, but the way I'm picking this up, the bigger message is take that leap of faith. Like you have to commit and you have to get vulnerable. That's also very Scorpio energy. So that's the type of um, feelings, right? That's the energetics you're going to be dealing with this week. So judgment, this angel is here calling these people out of the coffin and it's literally a rebirth of you in the newest, best possible version of yourself. So we've got the two of pentacles, which is about balancing a within. So without this is, uh, also warning not to bite off more than you can chew and to try to see things from both sides of the coin to gain a clear perspective of what you need to do next. And again, we're going to clarify all of these cards and we'll see how they play out for you this week. With the Seven of Wands, this is warning of potentially having to build some boundaries in relationship, but it's also a card of fighting for what you want. So I feel that with the cards that are surrounding you, with this secret and running away from things, if you've been in a relationship, by the way, because I'm feeling this as I'm reading your cards, if you have been in a relationship and you suspect that your partner is being unfaithful, the reality of it is your suspicions are correct. I can sense strongly that this is the catalyst to close out the chapter. And so for one second, yeah. All right. Look, Taurus, these cards flew out and they flipped upside down, not upside down, but they, they showed themselves. And so I've got the tower card and the seven of swords. All right. I'm going to call it how it is. Whoever's watching this, you might be really releasing a partner because this is a tower moment and the seven of swords. And I think I saw this already in your reading earlier that it might've been this or the five of swords. Either way, it's a card of strategy and using, um, logic, right. To win at all costs, to be honest, because that's what the seven of swords is. So in the traditional Rider weight, this person has, you know, I think what, four swords, five swords in their hand, leaving two behind, but, you know, basically leaving their enemies with a disadvantage and not even engaging, just walking away. So I feel like this tower moment, we're going to clarify what this could be about, but it's a sudden disruption in the flow of things. It is coming in under the row of the three of swords and judgment card. So We'll have to see what type of heartache that is. Um, the seven of swords, again, being strategic with your words. And, you know, also you don't have to go to every argument you're invited to Taurus. And there might be a moment this week where you feel like you should hold your tongue. That's what I'm hearing. Um, so that's not going to be for everybody, but then we have the eight of cups. Okay. So we've got the, I, I know I saw, where did it go? I'm, I'm sorry. I thought I saw the eight of wands for you earlier, but here we have the eight of cups and the eight of cups is about wanting more, leaving the past and the past and moving forward. Even if you're not sure where forward is, 
these cards are all suggesting that once you release this past pain, that there are endless possibilities ahead for you. And that's what this card's about. So if you look at the eight of cups, the moon is here and the moon suggesting, no, you don't have a clear picture of the future, the future, right? In my opinion, everything's happening now and the future, the past is a perception. So stick to the present moment. And when you're looking at how you want your life to unfold, I want you to sit in the vibrations and the feeling of excitement, of love, of pleasure, or whatever it is that you want to attract and tell yourself, I have it now. That is one step you can take daily that is free for you, very low, um, low physical energy, but it's all mental. The universe is mental. So hermetics. And with this eight of cups, it's saying, listen, you might not know the path ahead, but you don't need to know the how. You just need to know that you want to. Your will, your desire, your drive is enough to get you all of the things that you want, believe it or not, because you create the reality that you experience through your thoughts. Everything is perception. So I feel that this crossroads that you're at during Gemini season is going to be about having to make a choice. Like the lover's card in the major arcana represents Gemini, and it is about making choices for yourself. So let's see how this plays out for you a little bit more here. Tell me more about Taurus, please, Spirit. What can Taurus, <coughs> excuse me, what can Taurus expect this week? Why the Three of Swords is being clarified strongly by the Ace of Pentacles. Give me one moment. Some of you are getting a divorce settlement because there was um, adultery. You might have been waiting for some cut. This is super specific, but it's coming through. If I see the justice card, that'll clarify that. But, and also the wheel of fortune is a karmic cycle coming to an end. So you might be putting past, what's the word? You might be putting this energy of like, um, the lying, cheating, stealing, the divorce, whatever it was, the, the ex-fiance, whatever it is. I feel like you are putting an end to that. And the Ace of Pentacles, you might even physically be moving. And I'm hearing that if you are moving, this is a good time to do that with, I see someone here ending up on the other side of that threshold for the move by August. So what is this month right now? It is... May. I mean, that makes sense, right? Because this reading's for almost June. So if you are moving, that sounds about right, right? I could see you in your new place by August. So, um, and also this as well could be a good, a, a new job, right? You're just moving away and starting over. Ace of Pentacles is a new beginning in the material world, right? Something that, you know, of that something that's tangible. So why the world card and the wheel of fortune this week for Taurus? That five of swords flew out again. Hold on one second. Let me see what this is about here. And there's the eight of wands that I knew. All right, give me one second. So here's the eight of wands. And then we've got the king of wands. This is non-committal energy. So there could be something here about that. Um. All right. So ace of pentacles clarifying the three of swords with the five of swords clarifying the world card. So I feel like this time when you start your life over, you have the tools that you need. You have more, you have a, um, a different skill set. I feel that you won't be as, um, and, and this is not an insult. This is just the word that's coming to me. The word is naive and not to say Taurus that you haven't lived life and that you are immune to reality, right? And that you don't see the truth of the matter as things unfold. But a lot of times we want to see the best in people and we want to trust and you're a very stable energy. And so why would you expect others to be acting so shady, right? It's not something that maybe you perceived in a person that you trusted in the past. And now as you move forward, you leave that energy behind and you see people with a new perspective. Um, that energy is coming through as well. I'm hearing you're not necessarily as trusting which, by the way, is really pulling in that Scorpio eighth house vibe. Scorpios, um, I think I heard a Taurus actually say this once, and it was funny because it wasn't a Scorpio, it was a Taurus. And they said it's not uh, stalking, it's investigating. <laughs> So I feel like you're in that energy, right? Like you're really doing a lot of investigating about the people that are in your circle and how you want to live your life. Um, I feel like you're moving away from some really tough, like you're moving away from the end of a tough road. 
um, with this Wheel of Fortune being clarified by the Two of Swords. This is, you know, decision time, right? This is at a crossroads, which is exactly what I was saying earlier with this Lover's card. So, right, this is about luck and right timing, basically networking, being in the right place at the right time, having to make decisions. I feel like this is coming across in the relationship sector of your life. Whether you're in a relationship now or not, this Scorpio energy is going to have you going through the archives of everything you've ever done in your entire life <laughs> that has bothered you. And it's like you're going to be reliving it, which is probably not the most comfortable thing for Taurus, right? But that's what's happening. It's like this... Uh, you know, so that you don't have to be so closed off. Also, you might not have all the information that you need in the beginning of this week to make a decision in this um, relationship if it's an active one. But I feel that that uh, changes as the week progresses because we have the moon here above the, the, the two of swords suggesting that there's more information or pro potentially um, another way to do something. So with the judgment card and the eight of wands, I was saying before that this is going to happen very quickly. This is you taking action to progress forward into that new stage of life. And I mean, your cards are really telling a story because you are transmuting pain in the beginning of the week and really healing through that three of swords energy. I feel that, you know, you have some clarifying moments for sure that help you make decisions about being able to commit to that new lifestyle without that old energy. Like I said, if this is a current person, I feel like you are going to walk away from this relationship. Otherwise, this is like a loop that's been living rent free in your mind that you've got to put to the side. So with the King of Wands and the Two of Pentacles, you might be working a lot and you might need to be having some fun. That's coming through with the Two of Pentacles. It's like balance your obligations and desires, Taurus, and focus as much effort on your money as you have on your fun. Like, don't forget to enjoy dating, right? And I think that's what some of this is. Don't forget to enjoy the company of others. Like, you know, stop and smell the flowers, quite frankly. Um, King of Wands is also a, a masculine fire sign, Leo, Sagittarius, um, Aries. Gosh, sorry. <laughs> you know, for those of you that are new to my channel, let me just tell you, I am recovering from a health thing, right? Uh, that's part of my gig and that sometimes it happens. The mind just goes. So I'm back. I'm back online, guys. All right. So the King of Wands, Two of Pentacles. Um, yeah, I feel like there's some balance here in your life and that you've been like really focusing on your future. And I feel like the spirit saying you can't have you can't have a, f um, what's the word? <laughs> uh, you can't have, you can't be on both sides of the fence, right? You can't have one foot on either side of the line. I don't know how else to word this, but it's almost like, um, you know, you need to commit to the vision, the long-term goal that you have for yourself. And in order to do that, you can't both be committing to this abundant life where you have all of the things that you want, but still be playing a record in the background about that past person, that past heartache, or why did that happen to me? Or why did I, you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda energy. So with this seven of wands, I see you building some boundaries with the people around you and creating a, a more, um, a more intentional space for your day to day. Like I feel in the past, you were just kind of on a hamster wheel and now you're like, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> I say that and here's a three of cups card of celebration. You could be together, getting together with maybe the women in your family because um, this signifies a more feminine energy. Uh, doesn't have to be. It could just be definitely just getting together with friends for the first time in a while. But we have the seven of wands. And like I said, this could be two types of energies. One is you might need to be building some boundaries with your girlfriends or guy friends, people in your intimate circle, because maybe they got too close for comfort right? That happens a lot. Or the bigger picture is if you want to have more excitement in your life, you got to go after what you want, take action and have fun, right? Fight for what you want. And in this case, I feel like it's successful. That's the other thing. The three of cups is about celebration and victory. So if you are laying down the law, for example, and you are taking um, some 
I don't know, scary steps by saying what's on your mind to someone. I feel like it goes in your favor. That's for sure. Also, Mercury went into your sign on the 15th. And so it's a good time to voice what it is that you want. Um, let's clarify this tower card. The other thing, Taurus, I want to bring to your attention as well is that Pluto is in retrograde and I'll actually be doing a live stream on that this Saturday, um, at two o'clock Eastern standard. So you might want to catch that, but Pluto is in retrograde and that energy is going to have you reevaluating any toxic behaviors, limiting behaviors. This is a good time to change a health habit, right? Anything to better your physical vessel, anything in the material, uh, Pluto and retrograde is going to have you facing your fears as well. So I'm picturing in my mind the strength card. All right. So why the tower for Taurus? Hold on one second. This I'm looking at a couple of cards that flipped up, but I'm not taking those. The tower was just for matter of record. The tower was the 10 of cups, which is the card of family. So there could be a sudden change in the family unit. Let's see if that comes back up again, that energy. But why the tower card? I've got the tower card for the 10 of wands. The 10 of wands is about being exhausted, right? Where, well, the nine of wands is the wounded warrior energy. And the 10 of wands is like the end of a, a road of struggle, the end of um, difficulty. This person is heading to home. They're heading to their home, their, their place of comfort. And once they cross that threshold, it's like you can take off the, the heaviness, right? You can put down the burdens. And a lot of this, again, is, is just past stuff that I just see you throwing it out. And I literally am looking at like a big contractor bag and I'm seeing lots of like old stuff being put in there and it's like being taken out. And actually, I just heard recycling it and I'm seeing the empress in my mind. So that when spirit shows me that it's about reframing the perspective of a past situation so that it favors your vision of yourself for the future and now, which is interesting. So there might be this period of having to really see things differently, but this is a sudden, you know, shift and I would say closer to the weekend that you're just like, you know what, this really clarifies and allows me to set it away and put it down. And I, I, I have to go back to this energy of like, if you are, and I'm sorry to say it, but this is coming through, like you might be suspecting your partner, your spouse, someone here is, is not being completely honest. Take that however you want. I feel again that you get whatever information you need to, um, to move forward. And if it's not romantic, it really could be a friendship. Someone maybe in your circle, not being as, um, truthful with you only because I've got the seven of wands here with the three of cups, which could be about, you know, having to build some boundaries in your inner circle. And I think I mentioned that. All right. So why the seven of swords and the eight of cups, please? You know, what's funny is they're showing me here with the eight of cups, this card here, which reads the walker the unknown and a journey. So two things, you literally could be traveling because you have the eight of swords here. I'm um, not the eight of swords. You have the eight of wands here with the eight of cups, which could be a long distance relationship or traveling. I have to say it and oh, I normally wouldn't do this in a reading, especially not a general one guys, but this is how it came through. For those of you that are in a relationship and you're suspecting that your partner is having an affair, it, it might be with somebody like long distance, right? Somebody far. Um, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Listen, and the energies could be switched. So if this is you who might be in that situation, I feel like the questions are going to come up this week and clarity and uh, action happens. So the unknown journey, I feel like you're ready to take that risk and move forward. So why the seven of swords? Jeez, the seven of swords is being clarified by the three of pen or the three of swords. So this guys, I got, I'm sorry, Taurus. I don't know what else to say as much as I'm trying to I mean, this message is pretty clear. There is something going on behind the scenes. Maybe in the beginning of the week, you suspected it. As we get to the end of the week, there's clarification here that yes, there, you know, whatever it is that you thought was happening, yes, it was happening. And it, it's exactly what you needed to move past the energy and to release it. And um, I feel like somebody might've been, wow, Taurus, look, as I was, all right, 
This nine of swords is exactly what flipped up. It's going to be the last card here. So this nine of swords is clarifying the eight of cups. So why are you moving for something more? Because you can't take it one more minute. Like you're not going to live this nightmare anymore. So if you are starting, if, the, if you're in a new relationship and you're getting any red, red flags and you're even thinking twice about it, it's time to move on. If you think that someone's lying, cheating, stealing, being dishonest, um, I feel that you have the conversations you need and you move past this energy and you are starting all the way over. This is all about you taking a journey, even if you don't know where you're headed, because where you are now isn't serving you at all, to be honest. And again, this isn't going to resonate for everybody. Um, so if you're looking for a more personal message, you would definitely want to book a reading on my website. It starts with Stasi. Um, but in general, that's how it's coming through. This is like the end of a difficult road with that ace of pentacles. I keep going back to that as being the end game here. This is a new beginning because you're able to release. This eighth house energy is intense. It's intense. So comment below and let me know if you are shedding and releasing a relationship or a past hurt with a relationship. This is your shadow work this week. It reads number 17, forgetting oneself. And it's possible that that is the very lesson that you're learning through this heaviness, right? Maybe you did conform to someone else's um desires, opinions, thoughts, maybe you were too giving of yourself, you know, maybe, maybe you were feeling that you just lost yourself in the mix of, or in the midst of all of, um, all of the hustle and bustle of life. And so number 17 reduces to the number eight, that's Leo energy, strength energy, telling you to face your fears, face whatever it is. And a lot of times the biggest fear is knowing like, <laughs> who am I and what do I want? And when we can't answer that, that's scary. And so sometimes we don't even explore it. And that goes back to this card here, secrets and running away from problems. This Scorpio energy, this Pluto in retrograde is going to have you facing your demons, each and every single one of them. But this is nothing that's new to you. You've done this before and you can handle it. And so don't forget who you are. You are strong. You are a transmuter of energy and you are a person that is worthy of someone's honesty. And so I feel like this is a week where you go after what it is that you know you're worthy of and whether or not you get it, you are headed towards better days. You're headed towards something different. All right. So what can Taurus manifest this week, please? That's important. That must be for you. One second. This reads, I trust that my intentions, I'm sorry, it reads, I trust that my powerful intentions combined with my faith are enough to allow my vision to become a reality. I've actually seen this card a few times this week, which is interesting because I shuffle the hell out of these cards. And so I'm going to read it again because the universe is being serious about this one. And it's true. Your powerful intentions, right? Your will, your desire, and your faith. Those things are enough to get you this eight of cups. It's enough to end the nine of swords, this never ending nightmare, because this is a perception and this is you breaking free from that perception. Even when two of swords, you're not sure what go on the other side, what this looks like. You're not sure which, what you're doing even, but you're like, hell, I don't care what I'm doing. I don't want this anymore. And so this is you breaking free of that, living a new lifestyle, making a decision to step into this ace of, you know, ace of uh, pentacles and leaving the past behind. So again, your powerful intentions combined with your faith are enough to allow your visions to become a reality. Taurus, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Remember that these are general messages. They're not going to apply to everyone. And if you're a cross watcher, these energies could be switched. So take it how it resonates. If you're looking for more personal message, again, head over to my website and book a reading at starswithstassi.com. Otherwise, I would just love it so much if you would like, share, subscribe, drop some comments below. Let me know that you're out there, that you hear me, that I'm not speaking to myself because you guys are important to me and I do respond to each and every one of you. And my goal is to help heal the collective for those who want it. So please let me know how you're doing, where you're from, that you watched. 
I appreciate it. We're all stars from the sky, Tarth, with feet on the ground, doing the best we can with the information that we have. So be kind to yourselves and each other. And until next week, may the magic that we weave and the words that we speak bring healing to all those who seek it. Have a great week ahead, Taurus. You will get through this. Shine brightly.